Hi guys, this is Stefan here with Real Fitness Coaching and this video is in response to a viewer request. Roger, if you're watching, hi, this one is for you, my friend. Uh, Roger is a seasoned runner and has uh, mileage on the clock in terms of both uh, distance covered uh, and years, let's just say, uh, say it that way. And um, as is often the case, uh, the, the mind is willing and the body uh, perhaps less willing. So particularly the lower body is what we're gonna be focusing on in this video, how to get the lower body, both the hips, the knees, the ankles, functioning well so that you can uh, avoid injury, uh, perform better, and just enjoy getting out on the road or off-road uh, back into the hobby that you love running. Uh, but this is going to be a benefit to anyone who's looking to improve good function, range of movement, and uh, again, reduce injury in the lower body, whether that's running or any other kind of sport or activity. So we're going to cover three principles in our video today. Uh, the first one of which is mobility. We want to have good mobility in the joints, okay? The good articulation and movement in those joints, both the hip, the knee, and the ankle, as I say. Uh, the next principle principle is flexibility. You want to have good flexibility and extensibility uh, in the tissues, the muscles uh, and also the fascia, the connective tissue. Uh, and here's a good example of what I mean by that. So this material here has good extensibility. Uh, muscles can contract back, um, uh, the fascia doesn't so much, but it can extend and it's nice and pliable. This material right here doesn't have a very good extensibility. Great for tendons as they hold a lot of strength and a lot of load bearing, but not so good for our muscles. We want them to be much more uh, like the extensible band, okay? And the final principle is strength. We want strength in the muscles, which does carry over into the flexibility element as well and the connective tissues. We want that flexibility and strength component, those two components, uh, to work well together. They form what we call um, the length tension relationship. So the ability for a muscle to, to lengthen appropriately and then contract and there's a peak part in the range of movement where force can be produced. Okay, so starting off our first principle, uh, which is joint mobility, we're going to be looking at movement. We, we simply don't move enough. So we're going to use these, uh, these first few exercises as ways to both coax more movement, but also to assess what's going on. And if you've seen any of my videos, this first one, uh, hip circles, is, is features, features a lot at the, be, um, the beginning of my warm-ups, uh, because it's such a great exercise to feel what's going on in the linchpin part of the body, the lower body and the upper body, uh, the, the bridge between those two points. That is the hips. So as we take the hips out, I've got my hands on my hips so I can feel. Sometimes there's, if there's tightness, there may be some catching. There's a, a situation called uh, popping or snapping or catching hip where the IT band, which is a, a ligament that runs down the outside of the leg and the hip, can sometimes catch uh, against the outside of the femur, that's the leg bone. So as we take these hip circles out and around, I'm really feeling, I'll go the other way just to demonstrate. To, uh, to feel exactly what uh, sensations there are in the hip. Is it tight as I go out to the edge here? Have I got that sort of tight IT band feel? Is it the glutes maybe? Hip flexors, if I can't push forward here, maybe I feel it in my back more. That could be tightness in the hip flexors, uh, giving rise to some, some problems in the lower back. I'll talk about more why that can happen in a moment. Or maybe it's the, um, the outside of the hip as I push over this side and it's bunching up. Again, there could be a lot of tightness in the, the higher part of the glutes. But how is that movement feeling? And also, if I do a good five to 10 to 15 repetitions of this um, in, in readiness for maybe going out exercising, uh, or even last thing in the evening, just to give the body some movement, maybe I've been sat down all day, typing, writing, whatever it is, this is a good way to get some movement into the body. So we've got hip circles. You can then do a hip opener. Now, you can do this standing, but let's say, for example, you want some extra stability. I place a wall in front of me, and I'm just going to bring my hip up, out, and around. So from the front, so you can see, try and make sure the balance is good. I'm going to go across, out, and around. So I'm going across the body, out, and around. And you could be, do between five, again, 10 and 15 repetitions each side. You go nice and slow, and you're testing to see just how much dexterity there is in the hip. You're also getting a bit of stability uh, training for that ankle as well. So you can do those freestanding, you can use something like a foam roller here to support your position, or you can do them with your hands against the wall. So you can go five to 15 out and five to 15 in. Rather than prescribing a set number that you should do, I mean, if you have uh, a busy day and in, you know, you're short on time, doing five each side uh, with a couple of other of these exercises is always gonna be better than doing nothing at all. So if you're thinking, there's no way I can get my 40 minute mobility routine in, you know, shortening that and only including a few elements, but doing something rather than nothing each day is always gonna be beneficial. Okay, 
From there, we can go into a, a wider stance. Let me move this mat out of the way. A wide stance. And then from here, I'm going to sit over from side to side. Now again, this movement, you'll see in a lot of the warm-ups that I do. It's a really good one to test what's going on in the inner thigh, the adductors. And although we're not really running in this plane of movement, um, and the frontal plane going from side to side, uh, the adductors and the glutes have a, a synergistic relationship. So that means they support one another. If there's tightness in the inner thighs, again, if we're sat down for long periods of time or stood up for long periods of time without moving, this, uh, this region can get very, very tight and uh, affects both the hip and the knee. So this is another one, just see how low you look. Not looking to force it down into a low position and, and increase that range, but just through the movement, we get the release of what's called hyaluronic acid in the, in the tendons and uh, the ligaments and the muscles and the connective tissue. And that helps to lubricate. The more movement we get, the better. Motion is lotion. Okay, so we're gonna go into a more sort of seated position now. I've got the bench here ready. And these benches aren't the most comfortable, so I'm gonna stick a mat on top of mine. Now you could use anything like a footstool or a side of the bed or the sofa. And sitting down, I'm going to bring my knee up and over the side. Now the reason I'm going on the bench rather than on the floor, this is very similar to a, a yoga or Pilates type position, a pigeon pose, is that I have the ability to let this knee drop down. So I don't have to bring this knee up uh, if I was sat, sat on the floor, and that can sometimes lead to cramping in the hip. So it's a bit kinder to get into this position. So I want my heel not to be too close to my hip. This is where it may want to start off initially because it gets me out of the stretch. I'm not actually stretching the hip uh, in the way that uh, we want to for this one. So I'm taking my hip into external rotation, but into flexion. So I'm, I'm uh, stretching my glutes. You may even feel a little bit of the inner thigh, the adductors get a, a stretch with this one. Placing one hand on the heel and one hand on the knee. I'm not gonna pu push the knee down. I'm just gonna try and stop it from rising up too much. With a proud posture, really lifting the chest and pulling my pelvis up and over, I can then gently lower my body down towards my, my shin, okay? So this is gonna give a, 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 a stretch to the outside of the hip. Now we can do this uh, with movement rather than a static position. So this way we're, we're coaxing mobility into the hip joint. So we're focusing on the joint, not just a stretch for the muscles, although it's, it's giving us a bit of both. And by coming into and out of the stretch, so I might ease off to a five out of 10, and I might go down as low as maybe a six and a half to seven. Uh, I don't really need to go too much more than that. And it's the, the movement, again, that motion being uh, more lotion, more lubrication in the joint that I want to create, rather than just a static position. It's the movement I want. I want the joint uh, and uh, the pelvis and the femur to move past one another. So I'm thinking about that posture, nice and tall, and then hinging down towards it. And of course, you're gonna do this on both sides. This is just demonstrating these, these movements for you, these positions. Okay, nice and slow. And breathe. Breathing is another one as well. Nice and relaxed breathing with these movements. Okay, so there we have a few mobility-based uh, exercises there for the, for the hip. So I'm gonna go now to a uh, lacrosse ball. This is, you can use a tennis ball in place of the lacrosse ball. The lacrosse ball is pretty tough um, and it's a tough tool to use, but again, it's a, a good one that really gets in there. So basically, we're going to be self-massaging into uh, the posterior side of the hip, which again is a very commonly tight area if we're sitting for long periods or stood up. Now, the, the lower portion of the glute muscles and the higher portion of the glute muscles have different functions, a bit like um, uh, if, you've, if you've ever seen any pictures of the, the muscle, the glutes, is a fan shape. It comes together and attaches to a very small location on the outside of the femur, but it's, it fans out like a Chinese fan. And then so the fibers attaching to different points have very different functions. And this high point here can get very tight if we are uh, in this position for long periods of time, if we're slouching in the chair or stood up slouching, it can get very tight. So we're gonna basically place the ball on the floor and sitting at a position that you can see from the camera here, finger and thumb, just gonna hold the ball up to the hip and then lean down onto my elbow. That should put me in a position to have the ball in the right place, you might not be able to see the ball, and also my elbow in the right place to hold me up. So with any kind of self-massage or foam ro rolling, 
We want to make sure that we're in as comfortable a position as we possibly can. If we're doing something that creates a lot of tension or effort in the body, we're not going to be able to hold it for a very long period of time. So with this, I'm basically leaning into the pressure of the ball. I'm not lifting myself up and on top of the ball, but just leaning into. And you'll straight away feel uh, <laughs> a certain amount of pressure and, and discomfort. Unfortunately, when we're doing these, these massaging, self-massaging or trigger point release uh, of the muscles and the connective tissues of fascia, it's not the most comfortable experience. Now, in terms of time, how long you should hold this for? This could be, I would say, anything from three minutes to, to more. Five minutes is, is fine, but rather than set a particular time limit, you want to be looking to feel um, the, the, the discomfort abate and ease off, okay? So this becomes an easier thing for you to tolerate, a less uncomfortable uh, position to be in. The slightest movement, once you feel that release, um, a slight movement can, can crank up that discomfort again. So not moving too much. Again, think of these almost like trigger point releases. If you've ever had deep tissue massage, this is the kind of thing we're looking to create. And I'm not going to do a full three minutes for you here, but just to give you an idea, as I'm leaning over, now I like to hold the knee rather than let the knee close or fall to the floor, because that closes the muscle. It's like massaging the bicep when it's tense here. I want to try and have it in a relaxed position. So I like to hold the knee and you can move around. Once you get used to this, if you've not done it before, I start with something like a tennis ball and you can feel quite a few different areas, like I say, this big fan-shaped muscle. Um, and we're getting into the glute, glute maximus and the glute medius, two muscles there in particular that sit uh, in this outside edge of the hip. Okay, so from here we are now going to go to the foam roll and we've got a couple of different foam rolls uh, for you here. So this foam roll here is much softer. Okay, again, if you're starting off, this might be the place to start. But you can see with this foam roller, it's got a plastic tube and then a, a coating, uh, which is a little bit more um, intense. Uh, so maybe one to work up to. And we're going to go with the foam roller onto the quadriceps. Okay, so let's say before we get to that, let's do a little bit of mobility specifically for, for the hip. So if I have my knee down in a high kneeling position here. I'm looking to get uh, a stretch through the front of the thigh, but also the front part of the hip. So from here, I like to bring my toes up, and that puts a little bit more of a stretch than if I have the toes, the top of the foot flat. From here, I'm gonna keep my core engaged. Now I mentioned about the um, um, tightness in the hip flexor causing back pain. Well, if my hip flexors and my quads are tight, uh, then what that's gonna do is pull my pelvis down at the front, and you can see I'm exaggerating it here, but this arch in the lower back now means that I'm compressing both the muscles uh, and also uh, the joints here. This can lead to the facet joints, the joints of the spine becoming really uh, painful as they bunch up. So drawing my navel in, really using my core muscles to level the pelvis in this way, puts a stretch on these muscles. Now this might already be quite tight. Now make sure you have really got something soft underneath the knee and double this mat over because you don't want to go on the floor with the knee, that can be really uncomfortable. Navel drawn in and as I lean forward, I'm trying not to let my back arch, which is going to reduce the stretch and compress the back. So navel drawing in and then coming forward, this leg is kind of holding me up. Again, you could use something out in front to help hold you up, but really draw that navel in, pull that core in tight, and you're looking to feel that stretch through the hip flexor and the quadriceps. Well, the hip flexors, there's a few muscles that flex the hip. Now we can reach the arm up on the same side as the rear leg and reach over. And again, make sure that the back is comfortable and by reaching over and bring the arm back, reaching over and bringing the arm back, or even just moving into and out of that stretch position, just like we did with the hip, is a good way to stretch and mobilize that hip. So once we have that mobility exercise, we can then go into our foam roll to release the muscles 
And there's two, two major areas we're going to work on with the, the quadriceps. The quadricep muscle and the IT band. I mentioned that earlier as we're going out to the side. The IT band being this thick band of tension. And it runs a little bit like, you can see this uh, pattern on my shorts here. Runs down the outside and attaches from the, the pelvis, the ilium, down to the tibia. Hence the name, the IT band. And it's a thick band like a belt. And that stabilizes the hip and knee. And again, can become very tight. We're going to start off with the quadriceps. The way I'm going to do this is set up the foam roller perpendicular to the line of my body. Straighten out my leg. I'm going to bring my leg down onto the foam roller. And I want the foam roller to be right on the middle of the muscle, the muscle belly. Now, this knee on this side is high, like I'm doing an army crawl. And then my elbow is where I'm resting my weight. And this hand is going to be on the floor. And that puts me at a slight angle. So I'm not facing directly down, but at a slight angle. And from here, I can start to roll up and down. Move slowly, just to assess how things are feeling. And you might find initially that you can't move too much without finding some discomfort. In which case, you're not looking to uh, roll this out like a rolling pin, rolling out some pastry, but rather apply a held pressure that might be as long as 30 to 60 seconds. You may even find, again, that three minute mark is a good guide to be in a very small area of the muscle for the full three minutes, okay? You're not looking to, to rush through this and, 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 and really bash this uh, muscle tissue into submission, but rather find those trigger points. Now, if the foot is on the floor, that's gonna make it a bit easier for me. I can take some of the pressure off. Whereas if I drop myself down, and let the, uh, the foot seesaw up into the air, I'm using more pressure. Also, if I rotate my body this way, like a log roll, I can find different points, uh, not only long ways, but width ways across that muscle. And again, there's some pretty uncomfortable areas, quite commonly, as we get closer to that IT band. So I'm rolling up, especially down towards the knee, but also, in the middle or just above the middle of the muscle where the pockets, um, the contents of your pockets might sit. And again there, I'm not doing the full three minutes, but uh, even there I could feel uh, some benefit from that length of time. And we go sideways on with this one because I'm going to show you now the IT band specifically. So again, I want my body to be perpendicular to the line of the roller. And I'm going to be on my elbow and to start off with, first time doing this, bring one leg over. The working side is this lower leg, and I've just got the weight of that one leg, and I'm completely sideways on. I've got my leg as straight as possible, and this hand again supporting. So I've got a good, stable position, um, and uh, resting on my weight on the elbow. So I'm making it as easy for myself as possible. Rolling up slowly, and down to find those points of tension. And there may very well be quite a few. Uh, in fact, this one is, is probably a key culprit to a lot of uh, tension that builds up within the legs, the hip, uh, particularly the quads as well. So we're working on the muscle underneath, but that IT band as well is prone to getting very tight and very, very tender. And once you're used to doing that, you can then progress to having both legs. The extra weight, of course, of the other leg is now putting more pressure into the IT band. So I'm not suggesting you start here, but this is something you can work up to. And again, working down towards the knee, whereas on one leg, this might be not enough pressure. You might find you can use two legs together like this, lower down towards the knee, but as you get higher up, and there's more muscle tissue to be worked on, you need to bring that leg across. Again, take it to the level that is right for you. But that sensation you're gonna get from using the foam roller in that way is gonna immediately leave it feeling lighter, freer, uh, more, um, more movable, more mobile, okay? Uh, it may even be that you find some discomfort uh, is immediately lessened or abated uh, in the knee. Okay, so that's our um, quadricep and hip um, mobility and flexibility. Next we're going to go into some strengthening. Okay, so 
for the for the quads specifically in the glutes, uh, we're going to be using what we call a split squat or a hip hinge. So the hip hinge uh, is basically moving the body and the femur, the leg, at the same time, rather than doing a more upright body position as we go into a, a, a lunge or a split stance. So you don't need to use dumbbells for this initially, uh, but you can add resistance to it in a number of different ways. So my lead foot, I'm going to be working on my, my left leg, okay, my lead is my left, uh, and my rear foot is really just for stability. So 80% of my weight is going into my, uh, my lead foot, and about 20% of my weight is on the back foot, right up onto the ball of the toe. From here, I'm gonna think nice and tall. I'm gonna draw my navel in to make sure my core is engaged. Hands can be on the hips. So as I drop down, I wanna keep my weight into the heel of my lead foot. And as I come down, I'm looking not at the horizon, but rather down at my toes. And I wanna think about with my toe making a tripod through my foot. So the heel, the big toe, and the little toe. So I'm shifted over to my left slightly, rather than being uh, even spread with my weight, left to right. And as I hinge down, I'm thinking about getting a good connection from my glutes and hamstrings, and then the quads helping support those two. As I come up and down, like a piston, slow and deliberate. From the side, so you can see, so here I'm square on. I'm going to shift slightly towards my left, my lead side. As I come down, I don't lose sight of my toes. My head to my hips is as straight a line as I can. And almost as if I was going to tie my shoelace and come back up. So I don't want to round as I'm coming down or arch and stick my, my butt out, but rather come down and then back up. Breathing in and breathing out. Of course, we can go on to the other side, just so you can see from this angle. I'm leading on my right, hinging down. Nice and tall at the top. I really come up tall, complete that movement from my heel through my hip, shoulders and head should be a straight line. And now you can always set up a, your phone and video yourself doing this movement to get an idea of your technique and seeing how aligned and controlled the movement looks. And again, this is putting your mind into your glute, into your backside, into your quads and your hamstrings. You want a joined effort, working this movement down and up. Very little work is going into that back leg. Next up is mobility for the hip and the hamstring. So what we're gonna do is take a step forward, a small step, and then hinge down, bending the rear knee. Next up is mobility for the hamstring. Next up is mobility for the hip joint and the hamstring. So what I'm gonna do is take a step forward, bend my rear knee, straighten my front knee, and then come down, reach with my hands towards the floor, and slowly come back up. I can step to the other side and repeat, bending that rear knee, this way you can see that rear knee more clearly, reaching down nice and slow, and repeat. Now you can alternate like this, or you can work on the same side. Now what I'm doing here is hinging at my hip. Again, I'm tilting my tailbone back and up, and focusing on that stretch through the hamstring, getting that mobility, pulling my pelvis over the top of this femur, bringing the hands down, it's gonna add a little bit more pull, a little bit more range of movement, and I'm pulling on that hamstring, and just taking it as far as is comfortable. Now, if you can't reach down towards the floor, that's fine, you're just working with the range that you've got available to begin with, and you're looking for slow improvements over time. Again, in terms of repetitions, you could do between five to 15, or even go as many as 20 of these on each side. Of course, you're gonna repeat on both sides. If you're alternating, just count them up. One, one, two, two, if you wanna count them like that. Or you can do the single side and then repeat on the other side. Nice and slow with these movements. Stepping, again, it's not a, a long step. That rear knee bends, and as I tilt my tailbone up, and reach my hands down, I'm pulling on that tendon and muscle on both, uh, from both directions, nice and slow, and then back up. And that's gonna mobilize the joint, but also provide flexibility for the muscle itself. Next up, I'm gonna go with the lacrosse ball again, or the bench forward, and take a seat on the ball. So, putting the ball near the front edge of the, uh, edge of the bench, 
and then place the leg up on top of it. Now this one again can be pretty uncomfortable, but again, go with what's right for you. If it's a tennis ball to start and you progress to something uh, more solid like the lacrosse ball, then that's okay. Hands on the edge of the bench just so I've got a good stable position and I feel comfortable and supported, and then proud posture, tilt the tailbone back just as much because by doing so, that's gonna pull the muscle into a lengthened position. So you don't wanna go too much, but just find that, that right point for you. And I'm gently moving my body and my leg from side to side. And you'll feel this is almost a bit like strumming strings of a guitar. If you can imagine that, a thumb or a finger strumming across, and you'll feel the, the lines, the direction of the fibers. And there's quite a few areas that you can focus on. The inner part of the hamstring, right in the center, or the outside edge. Now the outside, outside edge, uh, very much like the calves, can become very prone to that uh, tension that builds up. Again, it's closer to that IT band, that lateral stability that that provides. Also comes, keep the breathing going, with a lot of tension that builds up. So you're not looking to, to really go aggressive, but really feel, start off by feeling for where that tension is. And a six and a half to seven out of 10 is all the pressure that you'll need, but you're doing it in a way that's as relaxed as possible. Just lean your body into that pressure. Keep the breathing going to stay relaxed through your body. And again, explore the areas that feel the tightest for you, that feel that they need it the most. Once you've done that, once again, the, the feeling that you should get, the sensation you should feel, is it's lighter, it feels looser, it feels freer. And then again, you can repeat that same movement. Step, come down, and almost certainly you will feel more ease, less restriction, less tension, whilst going down into that range of movement. Then you can go through your movement again and create even more mobility. All right, let's get on to the next one. Here we're going to be going through a strengthening exercise for the hamstring specifically. So if you have a dumbbell or an extra bit of weight, then this can come in really handy. And you can do this with both feet uh, or single leg. I'll go with both feet together first. Getting a nice proud posture, my core is engaged, I'm drawing that navel in, and from here, weight into my heels, I'm simply going to come down with the dumbbell towards the floor, keeping my back flat. Now, I don't want to bend the knees back if the knees hyperextend, make sure they just stay straight. And from here, coming up, I'm using my hamstrings and the glutes towards the top to pull my body back up to that top position. Now again, starting off, we're just looking to feel what range of movement we have. If we've done that mobility uh, release through the tissues and a bit of movement, this is gonna help us just add some strength in that range of movement Maybe that new range of movement that we have. And breathing in on the way down. Stretching, working the muscle under tension. Exhaling on the way back up. Now I can do a split stance version of that same exercise. Working on my lead leg, which is my left, the rear foot up on the ball of the toe, which is my right. And from here, that same movement hinging down. If I haven't got a dumbbell, just using the body weight is fine. I can increase the work by reaching my hands forwards as I come up. So now even though I've not got extra weight, that leverage has increased. Keeping that proud posture, really important to hinge from the hip. And I'm working that hamstring, a bit like a bicep, working under tension as it's lengthening out which again is very much how the hamstring works uh, whilst running. We can then go ahead and use a foam roll uh, or a wall if you haven't got a foam roller and do this in a single leg uh, version. So, same position, core engaged, keeping that proud posture, hinging down, reaching as if to the floor, and then come back up. So there's a bit of balance and instability involved in this, but that's certainly not gonna hurt as we provide extra balance and stability through the muscles of the foot and the ankle. Again, we're working the hamstring under tension as we go down, lengthening whilst working eccentrically. That's gonna get a lot of strength built up, even if we're not using too much extra weight. If you have the dumbbell, you can, of course, 
add that in. And there's another really good strengthener for the, the muscle, the hamstrings, the glutes, and also adds in that element of mobility. Let's get on to the next one. Loading up on my left, this is going to mobilize the ankle joint uh, on my left side, but I'm actually moving my right. So I'm just sliding. Again, you can need some balance. You can go ahead and set up the foam roll. Okay, this isn't necessarily just a balancing exercise. If you have that balance, that's fine. But the more I slide my toe forward, the more I'm moving my tibia over the top of my foot. And that's going to mobilize the ankle joint. And thinking about that tripod again, Okay, so my heel, my big toe, and my little toe, keeping the weight evenly spaced. And clock up the number of, um, the number of repetitions with this one as well. So the more you move, the more that's going to lubricate the joint. And you can do this one from a, a step as well. Okay, so the bottom step in your house, I wouldn't use a bench as high as this, but I don't want to drop this down and uh, spend time doing that. But if I reach down, let's say I was on one step, the bottom step, and I could maybe try and touch my toes to the floor. And that's another way, rather than reaching out so far, of getting that ankle moving. Now, a way that we can use the ball to create more mobility for the ankle, we can go into two areas, the calf and the sole of the foot. We're going to the sole of the foot first. Okay, so the ball is on the floor. And I place my heel down just in front of the ball and then let my weight go onto the ball. Now this is working on the plantar fascia. And that's the connected tissue that sits under the, the sole of the foot and attaches in to the Achilles tendon and then becomes the calf muscle. And a lot of times if you've had anything like plantar fasciitis, things like Morton's neuroma, can come from a lot of tightness, a lot of tension bound up within the foot. And using the foam roll, uh, foam roll, using the lacrosse ball, or even again a tennis ball to start is a good place to start, but you'll very quickly find that you can pro progress to something a little bit, bit, a little bit tougher. And I'm just working, scanning my foot across to feel for those tight spots. And if I feel anything in particular that's interesting, that's, that's tight or uncomfortable, I'm just gonna hold it and apply a little bit more pressure. But I'm not forcing my foot into the ball, rather I'm just letting my body weight lean over, let the foot relax as much as possible. Again, with this could be anything from two to three minutes to give you a time frame. But again, you will feel over time, whether it's three to five minutes, the pressure starts to become a little bit easier to tolerate. And that's really what you're looking for. That's this indication that you've you've got that release in the connected tissues. Next up, I'm gonna use the lacrosse ball again, this time for the calf. I can do this on the floor, placing the ball in front of me and bringing the calf up onto the ball. All right, now again, I can use the other leg on top, but you may find that that extra weight isn't necessary. Now, if you need to, you can go ahead and raise the ball up by putting it on a yoga block or a, a couple of books. Um, to raise up the height of the ball. Now the foam roll, in my experience, isn't quite enough to really get in there and work on the calves. It's a very dense um, portion of muscle tissue and it's working a lot all the time as we stand, even as we sit, if we're placing our weight through our feet and particularly running. So you need to get in there with a tool that can get in and break up those tissues and do the job. As always, it's going to be pretty uncomfortable when you get to the area that needs that uh, pressure, that needs that massage. A particular area that, that can often get very tight is the outside edge. As you can see, I'm turning my foot to the outside. And you've got not only the calves there, that, but uh, the muscles, the peroneals that, that run up the side of the foot and create stability in the foot and the ankle. If I need to, I can always just rest the, ball, uh, the extra weight of that foot over the ball and see my position, I'm trying to be as relaxed through the rest of my body as I can. And when you're doing these self-massage exercises, it really does pay to try and relax into it as much as you possibly can. 
moving across left to right and also rotating the leg just to get the pressure where you need it. All right. Okay. So that is a combination of exercises and movements that can help with mobility, uh, with flexibility, and then with strength through the hip. Um, if you have any more videos, any more requests that you'd like me to cover, just simply send me a message, DM me, uh, and I will put together a video that will help. Thank you very much, and I will see you for another fantastic workout very soon.